There has been a big break in the case of little Michael Vaughn, who went missing from Fruitland, Idaho, in July of 2021. Last Friday, crews descended upon a home in Fruitland, Idaho, and started digging up the backyard. There is very little completely known about this case yet, but we will continue to keep you updated. Hey everybody and welcome to the True Crime Squad. This is Katie Weaver. I'm here with my sister, co-host and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey everybody. Happy Monday. Yeah, it's our Monday Hello. case. And for <laughs> once, we're actually recording it on Monday. We are. What I'm is up? up. <laughs> That's kind of a rare event, but here we are. It is. <laughs> yeah. So how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, getting ready for our First uh, craft fair this weekend. Yes. Just making jewelry like I'm on fire. I hear that. Me too. Mm -hmm. I've been all, all over, all kinds of stuff. Yesterday, Scott finally said to me, you need to come up for air. <laughs> I said, meaning he's like, well, you've been in the same pajamas for two days. And <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, mm -hmm. He said, uh, you are, uh, yeah, you need to. He said, you tend to kind of get down a rabbit hole, which is kind of rich coming from him because so does he. Oh, yeah. uh, but, you know, so you know it's bad if he noticed. Yeah, that is true. That is very yeah. true. You should take a break and, you know, cuddle with the dogs and get dressed and, you know, to put it aside for a minute. So <laughs> I did because I had you guys all up to my house for dinner last night and yes. we played a very fun game and it was good. Oh, I definitely gosh. needed the break. If you guys have not played Ransom Notes, do yourself a favor. And get that game. It, it is, is fun. So fun. Oh my gosh. It is really fun. Yep. Yeah. It's good. It's my yeah. Day for sure. However, with all that being said, uh, really big, uh, pretty sobering update coming out of Idaho uh, today. A couple of them. Well, yeah. Not just today. Actually, this started on Friday with Michael Vaughn. But yeah, there's a lot happening in Idaho right now. And that's where most of our focus in this episode is. And so we're going to switch gears entirely and head there. So, uh, Christy, I'm going to turn the mic over to you for our first uh, segment this morning, which is Oh, Idaho. Yes. So some very scary and sad news coming out of Moscow, Idaho, which is in northern Idaho. It's many hours away from us. But it is where one of our state universities is, University of Idaho. And four uh, University of Idaho students have been found dead in an, a house that had been turned into apartments. This house is near campus. Um, the students were found on Sunday. They have been confirmed to all be students of the University of Idaho. Mm hmm um, I guess police were called on Sunday. Somebody reported someone who was unconscious. Mm -hmm. um, when the police arrived uh, around noon on Sunday, they found that all four people in the house were dead. They are not saying how they died, but they are calling this a homicide. Yeah. Um, this, it, it's always horrible when these things happen. But when you live in a state where these things hardly ever happen, it's particularly shocking. Yeah. Bigger places, bigger universities, this is not a rarity. Yeah. For our state, it is a rarity. Mm -hmm. So they've not released any details about the victims, um, but they are definitely being investigated as a homicide, and there is no one in custody at this point. Uh, they did tell the students that um, originally to shelter in place for a short while. Mm -hmm. And then they told them that they were lifting that advisory and just to remain vigilant, but they didn't think that there was a risk to anybody else in the near, in the area. Um, they did cancel classes for this morning for Monday and they've got counseling available and all that stuff, you know, but this is terrifying. Uh, you know, I think about, we have kids 
at a state university. It isn't this yeah. one, um, but we do have kids at a different state university here mm-hmm. in Idaho. Yeah. It's really, really scary when this stuff happens. And absolutely. The police are keeping this very quiet. We do not know anything about how they were killed, why they no. are calling this a homicide, if they have a suspect, nothing yet. No, they've um, been really quiet about it so far. Yeah, which, you know, I mean, they have yeah. to be. That's just for mm-hmm. everybody's safety and and to protect their case so that, you know, they if they catch somebody, they can prosecute. But they say, they're say they saying that in the next day or so, they're going to release the names of the students and mm-hmm. we're going to see more information come out of this. But it's just very sobering. Yeah. And we will be keeping an eye on it. We know there have been other, there was a university shooting in Virginia as well um, this weekend, which is also heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder how we can possibly even keep up with these kinds of cases. Yeah. But when they happen yeah. to our state and yeah. a little too close to home for us with kids in college, it's particularly terrifying. It, yep. It hits very hard. Yep. Yeah. So yep. we will keep a close eye on this and continue to update the case as we know more. Absolutely. So with that, Katie, um, I'm going to kick the mic back over to you for another big Idaho update. Yes. Many of you will remember this case. We've reported on it before uh, multiple times. And Mm -hmm. uh, this case has had national coverage quite a bit. This is little Michael Vaughn or Monkey Vaughn, as as, uh, his parents called him. And a lot of people in the news have referred to him as that as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, in July of 2021, Michael was five and he disappeared and the circumstances were it was right around six between like 6 45 and seven o'clock ish uh, in the evening in Fruitland Idaho Fruitland mm-hmm. is a little tiny town population a little over 6,000 so we're not talking about a big town at all mm-hmm. and dad mom was at home Dad went to a back room in their house to change a little one's diaper and order pizza. Michael was five. I mean, that's completely reasonable as a parent to take your eyes for a minute off a five-year-old, you know? Mm -hmm. I think we need to make that clear because there's been some really harsh judgment on the parents, uh, as well as a lot of accusations against the parents. And the police have never felt like the parents were suspects at all. Mm-hmm. But uh, there have been plenty online that has talked a lot of smack on the, the parents. And I think that uh, we need to make it clear. There's not a damn thing wrong with walking into another room and taking care of another child when a five-year-old's in the living room. Right. Nothing. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, at that point, it looks as though perhaps Michael did uh, go outside. Uh, which again, at my house, a five-year-old going outside wouldn't have been any cause for alarm. But Especially no, living in a small 6, Idaho town. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's not. Although I don't know that we can say that that's okay. Right. Anymore. Yeah. Anyway. At that point, Michael just vanished, just vanished. And there has been a hard search for him now for the last, what, 16 months. And with very little to go on. The, uh, Fruitland Police, the FBI, the uh, Idaho State Police, the ISP, have all been deeply involved in his search. They're deeply invested in finding this little boy. And they did over the summer uh, have a press release, a press conference, and say that they had some new evidence they were working on and that they were hoping that there would be something, you know, concrete coming soon. Well, that concrete thing... uh, at least started to evolve on Friday night. On Friday afternoon, they descended upon a home in Fruitland uh, on Red Wing Street that is about a four to five minute walk from the Vaughn's home. And with they descended with backhoes and tractors and started digging up the backyard. Uh, Chief Huff the, uh, the police chief there in Fruitland has said that uh, they have received a very credible threat that Michael's remains are in this backyard. They have been digging all weekend. They are hauling dumpsters of dirt away to a different location to be sorted through. 
and they've had cadaver dogs there. Uh, two different dogs have been there. There's been no medical examiner, which means a lot because uh, if remains are found, then a tent is placed, medical right. examiner comes in, like it's pretty obvious when they find something. But mm -hmm. as of yesterday, the chief had confirmed for the media that they have not found anything yet, but they are convinced he's here. They, they've had to tear down, there's a vinyl fence around the backyard that's been removed. They are saying that uh, they're digging three to four feet deep and that they will excavate the entire backyard. Mm -hmm. So they are really going hard and invested. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot to go on yet. We do know who lived there at the time. We do know who owns the home. It was a rental. Mm -hmm. We know that the people that live next door, a married couple, are both registered sex offenders. Mm -hmm. um, the people who were living in the home are not. Here's the thing. If you want the drama, you'll have to go to a different podcast for it because you're not going to get it on this one. Yeah. People have gone real life on this one in a really appalling way. There are YouTubers that have already interviewed those neighbors and published that. There are YouTubers mm -hmm. who are actively trying to get a hold of both of the people who lived in that home. They're both in jail on unrelated charges. He's been in jail since it looks like at least May. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a bunch of charges, a long list of charges uh, in April that were all released or that were all uh, dismissed in June. And there's some conjecture that maybe that was when she uh, maybe spilled it's her gun. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that yet. And there's people are flashing their names and their rap sheets and a lot of information that they've gotten off of their socials all over the internet. And we're not going to do that mm -hmm. and let, until there's an arrest, if there's an arrest. Um, we're just not. Partly because mom is begging people not to. And I am going to share a clip of mom yeah. uh, begging YouTubers to knock it off because I think this really needs to be said. We talked about this last week that these cases don't belong to you. They don't belong mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. They belong to the families. They belong to law enforcement. We can report these cases. We can talk to families when it's appropriate. We can do certain things in true crime, and there's things you shouldn't do. And right mm -hmm. now, there's a lot of people that have found themselves deeply invested in this case, which I understand. When you follow and you report on a case a lot, you do get deeply sure. invested. Well, and for However, us, an Idaho missing child, that's a big deal it's for a us. a big deal, yeah. We don't get very many of those, thank God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a lot of the same stuff that happened when Dior Kuntz disappeared, except yes. for that all of the public's, uh, you know, anger was focused on the parents, and they received a lot of death threats and, and things like that. Though I think that the that Michael's parents have as well. They've, they've mm -hmm. suffered a fair amount of abuse from the public. Um but right now, right now, while this investigation is just rolling out, while they are just searching this yard, and, and as far as we know, have yet to find anything, this is way too far. It is way too mm -hmm. far. We're not YouTubers, or any other YouTubers, are not investigators. And we're not law enforcement. We report. We don't investigate. We don't mm -hmm. meddle in Mm -hmm. An investigation, and we don't share information about people unless they're charged. Yeah, you know, yeah, nobody's charged right now. Honestly, I feel like there's a lot of YouTubers that are opening themselves up for lawsuits, right? Like, we have to be careful, everyone mm -hmm. should be careful and mindful of what they're doing and what they're saying. So, I will tell you this we have a plethora of information about these people, mm -hmm. and if the day comes that they're charged, we'll share everything that we have. But until then, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, if you come into our comments and start spilling all of their tea, I'm going to delete them. Yeah, you're going because to, you're booted. This is a worry. It's a worry and it's a problem. So I want to go back to Michael for just a minute. This is his, uh, one of the original uh, 
postcards. However, uh, this was actually updated in the summer to uh, mm -hmm. that they did in the summer finally say that they did believe that he had been kidnapped, mm -hmm. um, not just endangered missing, but perhaps kidnapped. Uh, but I wanted to share this picture one more time. I want you to remember this is who we're talking about, this little child who vanished, whose parents are absolutely frantic. So mom said that uh, law enforcement did come and talk to her on Friday, let her know that they had a very credible lead they were working on. She's still been carrying the banner of hope that Michael's alive out there somewhere. Of course she has, and good for her. Right. How can you not? How can you not? How can you not? And she still is. She said it's very hard to uh, hear the word remains mm. and that she's not ready to accept remains yet or give that information to her other children yet uh she won't be until the day if it comes that those remains are really found um remember this is four minutes from her house and they told her do not come down here for any reason and she had said that it's been really hard for her to not go down there because okay. we're talking about her son but she did put out a plea this morning. Um, I found this on Twitter and I wanted to share it because I think it's something really important for us all to remember when it comes to these cases. Um, we should have a code of ethics. There isn't one per se for uh, YouTube true crimers, but there should be. We and we should all have a personal so code of ethics, most certainly. So I'm going to play that for you right now. So this is... Uh, Michael Vaughn's mother. Uh, YouTubers that are contacting potential suspects. What? Stop. Stop. Let. You have no right. This is my son. You have no right. Stop it. You are not law enforcement. And what you're doing is you are hindering Michael's case. Stop it, please. Let them do their jobs. They are doing an amazing job and they continue to do an amazing job. And the things you're doing and pulling right now is unacceptable because you know what you're doing? If, if some of these things that are going on right now are factual, you are hurting anything of justice for my son. Now stop it. Please. You have no right. What you have the rights to is to keep his face out there and to keep hope and to support law enforcement. No, don't, 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 don't be contacting these people, please. You don't know the damage you can do to a case. Please. Thank you, everyone, for all of your love and support and kindness. I know you are all waiting, just like we are. Um, I don't know what to do. So our, our prayers are with the family mm -hmm. and with law enforcement. We'll continue to keep an eye on this case and update it as it evolves. That's what we've got. So, Christy, I'm going to turn the mic back over to you for another uh, true crime update. Yes. So there is a small update in the uh, Okmulgee murders. You might remember that four men went missing from Okmulgee, Oklahoma, um, back in October. And five or six days after they went missing, their bodies turned up dismembered floating down the river. Uh -huh. It's a horrifying case, terrifying case. These men had disappeared one evening on bikes, had um, implied that they were going to make some kind of a big score. So it's thought that there was some kind of illegal activity going on. Uh -huh. These four men went on. One person that was invited didn't go. And that's kind of why we know, we know what was said to him. Yeah. So their bodies turned up in the river, dismembered. 
And there was one person of interest, and there still remains only one person of interest, and that's Joseph Kennedy. Uh So there's been a a scene, probably potentially the murder scene, um, Uh near his uh, junkyard. And there, there was blood and, you know, there was a lot of things to indicate that something went down there. Well, police had spoken with Joseph Kennedy when the men were missing. Um, but when they went to speak to him again after their bodies were found, he had uh, gone on the run. Uh-huh. Joseph was caught in Florida driving a stolen vehicle. And he has just now been extradited back to Oklahoma. Wow. He is not charged in these murders. He is still being considered, being called a person of interest. But you Uh guys, he's literally the only person of interest of public record. Yeah. He is being held on a $500,000 bond for a parole violation. So. A $500,000 bond for a parole violation? Yes. Which I think does tell us, you know, police Uh are not calling him a suspect yet, but. People don't usually get held on $500,000 bonds for a parole violation, but that's, uh, we've seen this a lot with police lately that this is what they do. They find something to get a suspect into jail for that is unrelated to the crime or or more minor so that they have some time to investigate. And it does appear that that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. So Joseph Kennedy is now um, uh, back in Oklahoma. He is in jail. But isn't he like 72? Uh, he is an older man, yes. And there are a lot of questions. We don't know mm-hmm. if he committed these murders, if he knows who did, if he witnessed right. them. We don't know anything yet. Well, and we do know that the uh, the, the victims were like cut to pieces. Yeah. It's still really hard for me to fathom that a 72-year-old man could do that to four grown men mm-hmm. alone. Alone. I know that's been my thought too, um, but nothing has been released, but he is back mm-hmm. in Oklahoma now. So I do mm-hmm. think it's likely we're going to start to see some more movement mm-hmm. in this case. Um, Which is good because didn't initially law enforcement uh, say that they thought he was a suicide risk? Yes, there was some concern that he was a suicide risk. Mm-hmm. He abandoned his vehicle right. and then disappeared. And he, you know, was in Florida when they got him. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, it's possible we're going to see some more information start to come out. I've been wondering, Mm -hmm. this case is nearly a month old now. Yeah. And there's hardly anything. And they have said that they were kind of shutting down any information going out until, until, you know, they needed to get this guy where they can talk to him for one. Um, but I'm hoping this is some movement. I mean, these are four Mm -hmm. men, they had families, they had children. Yeah. I mean, this is a, It's a horrifying case in a very small town, very Mm -hmm. small community, very poor community. And they've lost, you know, four dads in this situation. I think three of them were dads. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, so Joseph Kennedy is now. seems like this should be a solvable case. I'm quite sure that it is. Yeah. I'm quite sure that it is because they've found quite a lot of physical evidence that we know of. And there's got to be way more that we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it, I think it's good news that, that this mm-hmm. is moving forward. Yeah. We may see more come forward, but I did find that bail amount interesting. My speculation is that that indicates that they know mm-hmm. that he has involvement in these murders because mm-hmm. being held for a pro for a parole violation at a $500,000 bond, that's a lot. That's way too much. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that, that definitely sends a message. Yeah. yeah it, it really does. So we're going to keep an eye on this and continue mm-hmm. to uh, cover, you know, what we find and what, what, what gets released. And I'm sure he'll yeah. be um, getting into court and then, you know, more things are going to start to come out, but it does appear that there's finally maybe some movement yeah. in these murders. Good. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's it. That's Monday. We'll be back with another episode on Tuesday, another brand new episode on Wednesday. We'll be back for Wednesday night case updates. And then for those that uh, subscribe, we'll be back Wednesday night for, uh, help me. The cold read party. (laughs) The cold read party. party. Yeah. (laughs) It's Monday. It's it's for sure Monday. Uh, Yeah, we'll be back for the cold read party. Uh, for subscribers. So that's what we've got this week. Lots and lots going on. So 
thank you so much for being here. Please be good to yourselves and please keep uh, Michael Vaughn's family in your, in your thoughts and prayers. They could sure yeah. use it right now. Uh, this has been yet another production of the True Crime Squad. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you.